Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Vlogmas. I'm Kelsey, thanks for stopping by Essentially Book today. And I am going to talk about my favorite romance novels this year. So, so I keep all of my reading in a spreadsheet and 33% of what I read this year was classified as romance, which I feel like is pretty average normal for me. I find that I will read pretty heavy or literary books and then I need romance or when things get hard and overwhelming. Romance is about all I want to read. So that came down to a total of 43 books with an average rating of 3.5 stars. I like to say I think I prefer historical romance, which I know is not everybody's cup of tea. But this year I actually read a lot more contemporary than I was expecting and I need to go through the stats for that more specifically but I read way more contemporary than historical which is not normal for me. I did some rereads. Lisa Kleypas is queen, Sarah McLean queen. One of them will end up in this year's wrap up because Lisa Kleypas didn't have a new book this year which is very sad. Um, but I just love romance so much so I'm just gonna go through my favorite ones of the year. It's not a top 10 list. Okay so I can't stop talking about this book, but The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. <laughs> I love it so much. It was just so unexpected and so quirky and so bizarre. And it deals with an Undertaker family and Mercy is the protagonist. And, you know, she's just trying to keep her family's business afloat, despite there being a monopoly on another Undertaker who's kind of trying to have a monopoly on the tags that dead people must have for their in order to pass on and heart is a ranger guy who goes into like the forbidden lands and gets bad spirits that have corrupted bodies and brings them fights them kills them whatever and then brings the bodies back to Mercy and he loves Mercy. They have a meet cute. They fight and butt heads, so it's kind of enemies to lovers. It's a fantasy romance, but it's just super bizarre and quirky and weird and I could not get enough of it. If you love found families, definitely recommend. If you like the dead romantics, this is very much in a similar setting vein and it also has a found family component. So I think if you like the dead romantics, Undertaking of Heart and Mercy might be one you like too. They're very different, but they're just so, the cover is a little bold and like some people probably might not grab the book because of the cover. And to that I say, oh my gosh, ignore it and just pick up the book. I listened to it on audio and it was a delight. Totally recommend if you're just looking for kind of, this would be a good Halloween read if you're looking for a Halloween romance because it does have that magical, weird, quirky feeling. But if you like just fantasy romance, this would be great anytime year round. And then, the Bodyguard by Catherine Center. I love Catherine Center and I think that she to me was always women's fiction so I didn't really want to read her for the longest time but I have found I've liked every romance she's written and I would classify especially The Bodyguard as way more romance. This is about a female bodyguard who is hired to protect I would say like a Brad Pitt type actor and they fall in love kind of have like some good moments where they address trauma together and it was just I read it in a day like I had no expectations for that book and it just blew me away and I think Catherine Center writes very well fleshed out characters that are believable and the romances are believable and so often I think romance has this like meet cute quick component and there's oftentimes a lot where the characters they have issues and they need to work through that but romance will ignore that sometimes I don't think Catherine Center ignores the hard gritty things that make people people and in a healthy real life relationship you need to address those things head on in order to have a healthy relationship whereas in romance novels a lot of authors will just ignore that and so I think she does a nice job of like the complexity of human nature and putting that in a romance novel I hope that makes sense but she just fleshes out her character so well and it's believable it's not like a false quick you have to suspend disbelief to make this relationship work in your brain as a reader she does such a nice job i spoke about this one too thank you for listening another one there's some di there's some disability representation and like the audiobook 
nitty gritty behind the scenes and it made it really fun and it was steamy and well fleshed out characters. So I would also add, thank you for listening to that list. Another contemporary that was up there for me was funny, you should ask. And this is about a journalist who is asked to write a feature on at the time, like the Brad Pitt, I'm making that reference a lot, but like the Brad Pitt level celebrity of their era. And she has lunch with him to do this meeting. And then he invites her to like a party he's having and something happens at the party between them. And you don't really know. And it kind of got speculated to and based on that situation, he still lets her write this article and she writes this article that she'll forever be known for and he is known for because of this article too. Like they just go hand in hand and there's a history with them. Flash forward 10 years later and the hero is trying to get his acting career back after addiction and just some hard things. And the publicist for this actor is like, hey, we're gonna have, we're gonna have the heroine write this article about you and do kind of make it similar to what happened 10 years ago. And as they write this article, you slowly find out what happened 10 years ago and they fall in love throughout the course of this 10 year story, but you don't know what happened at the beginning of the book 10 years ago and the book brings you up to that as it concludes in their present day. And again, read it in a day, it was such a surprise. It's not getting a lot of hype and I think that's strange because it was so well done. Like I would say it's better than Book Lovers, which I liked but didn't love. I don't feel like it's showing up on the list that it should show up on and I want people to read it for that reason. All right, and now we're gonna get to the ones that I have physical copies of that we need to talk about. We'll end on historicals because historicals are by far my favorite. So I finally gave into the hype of the Bromance Book Club and I'm so mad I waited this long. I gave into the hype so much that I've read all five this year and I will say still the Bromance Book Club is probably my favorite and then Isn't It Bromantic, which is the Russian story and then A Very Merry Christmas no, a very merry bromance. And then the other two are just kind of meh for me. But this is a series contemporary about men who read romance novels to be better significant others for their partners. And the characters are all, all the men in these books that so takes place in Nashville are celebrities. There's a baseball player there. There's baseball players. There's country music stars. There's a hockey player. There's a football player. There's a bar owner and all of the women that they're trying to win back or whatever are all amazing. And it's, there's like one book that focuses on the me too movement. There's one book about like Russia kind of, and then the latest one, she's an immigration attorney with a very abusive and manipulative family and it deals with that trauma. I just can't, you guys, it's so good. This one deals with divorce, so just know that going in and also look up triggers because there is, I guess there's, I will say there's sexual assault in some of them. There's triggers, but the author is so, she handles it so well. But these books are laugh out loud funny and believable and just rips your heart out. They're steamy, totally recommend. I really, really, really like Joanna Shoup. She writes Gilded Age Romance set in America. So like think Knickerbockers, like early 1900s where oil is on the rise and people are super wealthy. This series is the Fifth Avenue Rebels and the fourth book I just got an arc of and I'm so excited about. Anyways, I thought it was by me, it's not. But I just got an arc of it. I read two of them this year. So I read The Bride Goes Rogue and The Lady Gets Lucky. I think I liked The Lady Gets Lucky the best. This one is about Alice Lusk, who is tired of being overlooked by every bachelor. Something has to change else. She's, she'll be forced to marry a man who only desires her fortune. She needs to become a siren, a woman who causes a man's blood to run hot, and she's just met the perfect rope to help her. So Kit Ward has plans. He wants to be like a businessman, and he, so she convinces him to be her bedroom instructor. And obviously they fall in love. I mean, look at the cover. <laughs> but what I like about this is there's like a food component to it. And if you know me, you know, I love food writing. And also he isn't afraid of letting his woman be strong and independent in this time. And that's something that's kind of a trademark of Joanna Sheep. So she does not let her heroines stay home and make babies. Like they're out participating in society at a time where that was kind of frowned upon, but she does it historically accurate and 
lovely and amazing. The book before this deals with a female tennis star. And then this one is this girl. She's the daughter of a tycoon and she should be married, but she keeps not wanting to be. And she's engaged to Preston Clark, who's also kind of like a big deal, like money wise. And he refuses to acknowledge it. They meet at a masquerade ball and fall in love through just things. And Preston can't believe that it's Catherine when he finds out. So this one's also super fun, but Joanna Shoup, this one, and then, so there's Fifth Avenue Re Rebels. And then the other series I really liked that I've read is the Uptown Girl series. So she's great if you want like really kind of modern historical romance in the 1900s. Gilded Age. <laughs> My go-to author. I said it was Lisa Kleypas and then there was one other earlier in this video is Sarah McLean. So if you haven't read any of her series, she's got quite a few. She's fantastic. Her newest one is just so fun and modern. Um, she has one series that's set in like a gambling world. She's got another that is three brothers. Actually, there's a few that are three brothers, but they are like kind of Peaky Blinder-ish gang type in London. This one deals with the Hell's Bell. So these are all women who are quirky and maybe smart and do things untraditionally and they all kind of become outcasts and they get swept under Duchess's organization and it becomes kind of like a girl, like literal girl gang and they help to right wrongs in late 1800s London and they right wrongs of women who've been wronged by men, like men who take liberties with women. And this one is Addie Frampton who she can steal anything. She's just a thief. And so they use her to pickpocket people and like plant things throughout this gang. And then the Duke of Carrington, Duke of Claiborne, who's like this curmudgeon -y, grumpy man and he catches on to her all the time and is just so over it. They fall in love and it's just such a fun wild romp. Like this, this book she packed in about every trope, every ridiculous thing that could happen happened but it was like so perfect for these characters and it was just so much fun. Any book by Sarah McLean I would recommend. There really hasn't been any that I hated. There's been a few that weren't as strong as others but I did a video talking about my favorite books of all time and her book Day of the Duchess is probably one of the best romance novels to me. Sarah McLean, this one is called Heartbreaker. I don't know if I said that. So this is the second novel. The third one's coming out this year. Those were the highlights of the romance novels I read this year. Like I said I had a great romance reading here. I read a lot of books. I would like to know in the comments what your favorite romance was. And if you don't read romance, that's okay. Just leave a heart emoji in the comments. And again, thank you for stopping by my channel. Join me for another day of Vlogmas. We will continue on throughout this week and next. And I look forward to seeing you. Thanks everybody.